So in this video, we're going to talk about the MOS capacitor uh, full band diagram or the MOSFET full band diagram. Uh, so in the last video, we talked about how we were applying some voltage to the gate of a MOS capacitor. And we said that, well, there's some metal here and some oxide here. And what we're really interested in is the semiconductor. So we're really interested in the band diagram of the semiconductor. And we showed that if you apply a voltage, um, let's say initially this semiconductor is p-type. So p-type is Fermi level below the intrinsic energy. If you apply some positive gate voltage Vg, then so you say Vg is like 0.5 volts, then these bands will start to bend down away from the, uh, or in the intrinsic energy will bend toward the Fermi level and will create some depletion region here, Xd. Um, and notice that this is a one-sided depletion region. So we know how to calculate it if we have the voltage that's dropped across, the, uh, across this depletion region. But I said that uh, we were ignoring this oxide and this metal, so we didn't draw out the full band diagram. And that's what we're going to do in this video. And to do that, first we need to introduce this concept called the vacuum level. Uh, the vacuum level E0. So the vacuum level is just uh, an idea or a way of representing free space. So it's a way of saying, if I've got some semiconductor, say I've got a, a piece of silicon here, and I want to not just raise an electron into the conduction band, but I want to strip that electron from the silicon completely, then I need to go from the silicon's conduction band, or if the electron is in the in the valence band, then I'll need additional energy. But if I want to strip that electron from the silicon, from the entire semiconductor, and make it go out into free space, I need a certain amount of energy, uh, this amount of energy, Q times chi. Uh, and chi is known as the electron affinity. And the way that we draw the full band diagram is this electron affinity doesn't change. So for any given material, it's fixed. Because no matter what we're doing inside the material, it's never going to make it any easier or less difficult to remove, to strip an electron from the conduction band, if we assume that the electron's energies are all concentrated at the conduction band. And so that's the... that's the the idea of a vacuum level. And we're going to use it to create the full full band diagram. And so we're going to say that this is p-type semiconductor. So initially the Fermi level is down here. And so next we have the band diagram of the silicon. So this is the semiconductor. And next we have the oxide. So the oxides band diagram is really boring. Um, it's literally just uh, a conduction band way up here. It's pretty close to the uh, to the vacuum level. So if we end up with any electrons way up in the conduction band, they're going to be, be very easy to ionize. And a valence band all the way down here. And this band gap, uh, this band gap is like nine electron volts. It's huge. So you can see that the oxide makes a terrible, terrible um, conductor, which is one of the reasons we love it so much as an insulator. And then we've got the metal. Oh, and the, the Fermi level within the oxide, um, we don't really know where it is because we don't, uh, we don't know. Usually we'd say, how much is the oxide doped? Um, generally, we just assume that the Fermi level doesn't matter for the oxide because uh, the me the Fermi level of the metal and the semiconductor are the ones that are generally of interest. And then we've got the metal here. Uh, now the metal is uh, even more boring than the oxide. It's just got a single um, energy band. So this is the conduction band and the Fermi energy for the metal. 
And I'm going to draw this in pink so that it's the same color as the silicon's Fermi level. And so this is the metal. Uh, all of the electrons are concentrated in the conduction band, and that's why it's also uh, the Fermi level. So this is basically just, um, it's, it's really simple. It's just a single line. Now, the way that we, oh, and uh, one last thing, this we call this the electron affinity for silicon. Uh, for metals, it's called the work function, uh, phi m. And you may have encountered this in your physics courses uh, when you're talking about ionizing a metal or when you're talking about stripping electrons from a metal, the photoelectric effect, um, using photons to try and strip electrons from the metal. This is the energy needed to strip electrons from the metal, just like it was the energy needed to strip electrons from the silicon. Okay, uh, so we've got a uh, this fairly complicated mess, um, but how do we put it together? So how do we draw what happens once we put uh, all these materials together? So we've drawn everything separately. Um, what we need to do, a general rule, is that in equilibrium, um, EF is constant, the Fermi level is constant. So we have to draw this so that there's a single Fermi level. There's a single Fermi level that goes across the entire, the entire band diagram. And so we need to connect these two Fermi levels. We need to bridge this distance. Uh, and the way that we're gonna do that is through bending the bands. So we're gonna bend the bands of the oxide and we're going to bend the, the energy bands of the semiconductor. And uh, this total amount of band bending, the difference between the Fermi levels of the metal and the Fermi level of the silicon, this is known as phi ms. And I'm just going to work with the magnitude of phi ms. So strictly speaking, uh, phi ms is uh, the work function of the metal minus the uh, affinity of the silicon or the work function of silicon, uh, which would be simpler to use. I don't know why we introduced this whole electron affinity thing, probably because they were discovered separately. Um, but this is, I'm just going to work with the magnitude of phi ms. So I'm going to say that phi ms is just the magnitude of the metal minus the uh, silicon um, affinity. So this is the total amount. You can think of phi ms as the total amount of band bending. required. And this is the amount of band bending that's required to make these two Fermi levels equal. Uh, and so we're going to need to introduce that amount of bending across both the oxide and the semiconductor. Uh, now I've, I've glossed over the fact that usually there's also positive charges uh, hidden in this oxide and that makes things a little more complicated but we're going to ignore those for now just because I think this picture is complicated enough as it is. So in the next video we're going to talk about how exactly to merge uh, how to merge this each of these separate diagrams and the way that we're going to do that is it's all going to be about the band bending so the band bending and phi ms uh, are going to be very central quantities. And if you understand these two concepts, then you should be able to do this on your own without much difficulty. Uh, because the phi ms describes the amount of band bending. So the total amount of band bending we need to split across the oxide and the, um, and the semiconductor. So in the semiconductor, our band bending will look like this. It'll bend kind of downwards. Uh, in the oxide, it'll just bend linearly like this because there's no charges within the oxide. There's no depletion region formed. Uh, it's just a straight up uh, voltage drop across the across the oxide. So we're going to go over that in the in the next video. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.